Hey guys, Tactical Minds here, and uh, <clears throat> today's video is going to be about how to command respect and take control in any situation, and um, also how to have what we call law enforcement uh, officer presence. Um, now, this is going to be for civilians to teach you again how to take control in any situation, but also for any new law enforcement officers coming on the job or any current law enforcement officers that are on the job. Uh, Again, teaching them how to have better overall officer presence, um, not to call any officers out, but, um, you know, officer presence on the job is your first line of defense. And my guys that have been in law enforcement for a long time, a lot of you good officers out there, um, you guys know exactly what I mean. You would be surprised as to how many less people want to test you in a confrontation or on the street simply when your level of presence commands that respect without um having to escalate it to another level. Um, so before we get into it, um, as always, guys, please, um, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, um, you know, hit the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. Um, at the very least, you know, if you like what you see, please like the video. It does help the algorithm for YouTube out and it helps to boost the videos up so that people will actually, um, you know, see them um, coming up in their feed, especially people who aren't subscribed. Um, and also guys, please, Remember, go follow my Facebook page, Tactical Minds. Um, you can, um, you know, get updates on new videos there, and you can direct message me um, directly there if there's anything that you'd like to chat about. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so let's get started. So first tip is um, the loudest guy in the room, okay? That is the guy that's always trying to usually, I won't say always, usually is trying to overcompensate, okay? So... We don't want to be the loudest guy in the room. Being the loudest guy in the room doesn't necessarily mean that you're in charge. When you're the calm guy and, you know, you're remaining calm in a stressful and tense situation and not just screaming and yelling, that commands a lot more presence and a lot more respect than the guy who's, again, just screaming and yelling wildly. A lot of times when you're screaming and yelling like that, it kind of shows that you're maybe trying to cover something up. Maybe you're trying to cover up fear or something like that. Um, but being very calm and very cool and collective in a very stressful situation, that is going to show that you are in control and that's going to put more fear in your opponent than anything. Um, second thing is going to be when you're in any conversation, especially if it's in a confrontation situation, um, you know, maintaining that good eye visual, okay? You wanna make sure that you're maintaining that eye contact with them, looking them directly in the eye. Now, if it's a confrontation level, again, you wanna look them directly in the eye. You don't wanna put anger in your eyes and try and you know scare them or anything like that, but you're trying to maintain that good eye contact. And on that level, um, another thing is, you know, again, don't be looking down, don't be looking left, don't be looking right, be looking directly at the person. A lot of times when somebody looks down in a conversation, um, especially if it's a confrontational situation, it shows that you may be embarrassed or it shows a sign of weakness. Um, you know, true uh, respect and confidence comes from within. It's not what you're, you know, portraying out, puffing up your chest and all this good stuff. Um, next thing is, um, for law enforcement officers being squared away in your uniform, right? Having your uniform, you know, fit you perfectly, not sloppy or hanging out, everything like that, you know, boots looking squared away, pants looking squared away, creases, all that good stuff for people that aren't law enforcement. Again, you know, having a, you know, good appearance, wearing clothing that fits you, that's not baggy and hanging off you and stuff like that, okay? You don't have your jeans hitting down to the floor, you know, looking like, you're, you're, you're playing the part, right? Because again, that shows somebody that this person is squared away and takes care of their appearance, therefore is not just, you know, sloppy and somebody to mess with, okay? Um, a lot of times, to be honest, when you're dressed sloppy like that, you just look like a joke. Um, next thing is gonna be uh, having good posture, right? Um, you know, having us straight up, you know, our shoulders back, our chest out, right? I'm not saying puff your chest up, but I'm saying, you know, have that good posture, that good appearance. We're slacked over and we're slouched like this. You, you just look like a bag of shit. And quite honestly, um, people aren't going to take you as seriously. People aren't going to respect you. You're not commanding the respect. Um, the next thing is going to be, um, you know, be confident 
um, in a situation, but, you know, be careful not to be over cocky. Um, a lot of times over cockiness could be, again, a sign that you're trying to sell somebody that you're something that you're really not. And like I said before, you know, confidence comes from within. When you're truly confident. Believe me, the person that you're dealing with is going to know. Um, now, going on that, you know, uh, level we said before, as far as if a thing is going to get confrontational, um, again, being confident a lot of times is not going to escalate that situation and it's going to take that confrontation down. Most of the times, nine out of 10 times, a guy in a fight who's screaming and yelling about what he's going to do and I'm going to beat your ass and all this stuff, nine out of 10 times is not willing to do it. OK, when you're sitting there and you're being confident and you're maintaining control and composure and you're not yelling and screaming with them, I promise you, it puts a lot more fear in them. OK, but should the confrontation get to a point where it's going to escalate to, you know, a physical altercation, um, you should know how to defend yourself and be prepared for that. Um, you know, like Mike Tyson said, right, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. All right. So um, another thing is um, not over apologizing. OK, don't don't constantly be apologizing for things. Now, there's nothing wrong with, you know, owning up to something you did. If you did um, make a mistake or you said something wrong, there's nothing wrong with taking a step back to apologize. But you don't want to constantly over apologize again, especially in that confrontational situation. Stop saying things like I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. Stop. Stop doing stuff like that. If the person is being very confrontational and you want to de-escalate the situation and bring it down, don't be constantly apologizing and stuff like that, that's not going to de-escalate and bring it down. All that's doing is showing a sign of weakness and giving in. Now, what you could do to de-escalate the situation is you could sympathize with the fact that that person is frustrated or upset um, at that time, okay? But not sitting there constantly saying you're sorry. You're not sorry. You know, if, if you didn't do anything wrong, there's nothing to be sorry for. And if you're a law enforcement officer and you're doing your job, you don't need to apologize for doing your job, okay? Um, Next thing is going to be when, you know, you're having a discussion with someone and they're kind of coming at you, coming at you real quick, right? Um, you know, take a couple of seconds, take it in and take, you know, maybe two or three seconds to formulate a well response. Um, a, a lot of times it's our, you know, when we're kind of in fear or nervous, it's our human tendency to rush a response, just get something out there because the person's coming at you and you feel like you just need to say something right away, right? You need to get it out there. Stop, take a couple seconds. If anything, that's gonna calm them down a little bit. And again, show your confidence level, formulate a response. Don't be so rushed just to get something out there. Now, another thing, yeah, excuse me, that I'm um, gonna kind of nitpick, and I know some people are gonna probably break balls over this, but whatever. Look, when you're out in public, you know, wearing uh, shirts or what I like to call tough guy clothing, wearing shirts that say, you know, you're an MMA badass, or you know, you're a jujitsu master, or you know, you're a big gun guy, or you know, having all these flags and patches, or or you know, huge veteran things all over the place. Um, a, a lot of times, it, to me, you're again, you're just. You're, you're trying to oversell yourself. There's there's really no need to be that. Trust me, um, it, when you walk into a room and you're that guy that is confident and in command, people know it. Your shirts don't tell it, okay? Um, just like the screaming thing, right? All right, screaming may work for Samuel Jackson, but outside of that, it's probably not gonna work for you, all right? Um, you know, the toughest guy in the room is usually the most quiet guy, okay? It's not the guy that's grunting and yelling and hemming and hawing and beating his chest and all that. It's usually the quietest guy in the room. That's the guy you usually want to be concerned with because he doesn't feel the need to tell you what he's going to do to you. If something goes down, he's just going to act and do it. Um, another thing that, again, is I know kind of controversial, but to me, um, you know, being in shape and if you're not in shape, um, at least having a, you know, a manly stature, I guess, you know, having, having some upper body strength, right? Having some broad shoulders, you know, having a little bit of a chest. I'm not saying you have to be chiseled abs, you know, going to be freaking Channing Tatum, but I'm saying, you know, have a strong upper body, you know, have a, a strong neck. Um, you know, a good, strong, defined jawline. I'm not saying go out there and buy that little ball gag jazz or size, whatever the frick they thing they call it, or jaws or size. Not saying something like that, right? I'm saying do a push up once in a while. 
do an overhead press once in a while, just something, you know what I mean? Another thing is if you are in a situation where you're speaking to someone one-on-one -on -one, or again, in that kind of confrontational situation, square yourself to the person, okay? Don't be sheepishly kind of leaning off to the side and stand in the way or doing this, you know, sit there, you know, arms crossed is fine, but you know, stand up straight, shoulders back, square to the person, look in the person dead in the eye, maintain that composure. Now, if you see that it is gonna go to a violent altercation, then if you want to go ahead and kind of blade off and take a little bit more of a defensive posture, you know, that, that's okay. Um, but, you know, uh, don't, don't, just don't tense up and, you know, give away fight cues. If, 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 um, if, if violence is imminent, you, you know, you don't want to sit there and, you know, look like you're getting ready to do something. Just, you know, again, maintain your composure, maintain calm. Now, a huge thing we preach in law enforcement, but I think this goes for a civilian too, and especially if you're in a you know uh, situation where it's confrontational. I know I keep saying that word a lot, um, but in law enforcement, we have a thing called ATM, right? Ask, tell, make. Now in law enforcement, I'm gonna tell you that's the first sign of weakness if you're not following that, okay? I've seen it happen to countless law enforcement officers. You ask the person to do what you want them to do, if they don't comply, you tell them to do what you want them to do. If they don't comply, you make them. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Don't be taking second guesses to think about it, giving second chances. You ask, you tell, you make. And the same thing goes for any of you civilians out there. If you're in a violent altercation, okay, you're going to ask the person to, you know, hey, please step away from me. Okay, okay, please just step away. All right. They don't want to step away. Look, I'm telling you, Take your step back, okay? Step away from me. You're in my personal zone. Stop it. And if they don't want to do that, go ahead and make them. Make them step back away from you. Show them that you mean business. Don't be messing around, okay? Pussyfooting around doesn't work for anybody. All right. Um, you know, I'm just going to kind of finish up but with uh, a little story about um, a good friend of mine, okay? Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what I mean when, you know, you, you, you put a lot of these things together, right? So um, let's just say two friends of mine, hypothetically, okay, happen to be at a, uh, you know, establishment and having a couple of drinks, whatever, right? And, uh, you know, guys are getting rowdy, testosterone's flying, this, that, and the other thing, right? Well, next thing you know, one friend, uh, you know, holds off and gets punched in the face by one guy. Other guy goes to stop the other guy and you know, vice versa. Next thing you know, there's three or four guys on top of, you know, two guys, right? Now, my one friend, he gets up. And at the same time, the three or four guys on the other side get up. And with not a word said from my buddy, okay, all four guys are staring and looking at this guy and they're sitting there and they're proud and they're strong and they're ready to go, right? They're all ready to throw down, right? And they're four on one, right? You would think that's, that's easy odds, right? Take that any day. This friend gets up, looks them dead in the eye, doesn't say a word, does not say a word, just looks them dead in the eye for about five to six seconds, probably felt like a minute to them, stared them in the eye, didn't break eye contact, didn't say a word, and I shit you not, all four guys backed down and apologized and said that was it, they didn't want anything else for the rest of the evening. That guy was not the, you know, a bodybuilder, or anything like that. He was not even the biggest guy in the room. But because of the way he composed himself, because of that stare, because of the way he is, because of the confidence he knew he had and he wasn't going to back down, he didn't have to scream. He didn't have to yell. He didn't have to say anything to these guys. These guys took one look at him and knew, you know what? The four of us are not going to sit there and try to mess around with this guy. Anyway, that was just a little story to wrap it up. I hope you guys really um, enjoy the video. You know, again, please like it if you do. Um, it takes a second to smash that like button. And again, please follow us over on the Facebook page. It helps a lot. Um, and, you know, thanks for watching as always, guys. Um, you know, stay safe, stay tactical, stay dangerous, stay confident and in control. All right. Have a great day, guys.